Welcome to the Marriage Adventure Podcast, where we talk about marriage and everything that pertains to it. It is so great to have you here with us today. We're your hosts, Daniel and Bonnie Hoover. Yeah, we're glad you're with us. Yes, we are. Thanks for listening. And uh, here at the farm, we uh, a lot of times we'll talk about farm stuff, and um, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, but... Um, I spend a lot of time in the garden, especially this time of year. And we talk about the donkeys a lot. I don't think we've talked about the garden enough. Well, well, I spend a lot of time out there, um, just working with the in the in the garden and weeding it, and um, just making sure that it's growing and it's healthy. And um, recently, we've not had a lot of rain, uh, so I've spent a lot of time watering it. It's been uh, kind of. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. true. But we've started getting some um, vegetables in, and we've been eating all week. We've been eating some vegetables, and um, and the other day I was out there, I was push, pick, picking, pushing, picking. <laughs> I was picking some green beans. We've actually got a good bit of green beans in. We've got enough that we can. I've been getting about a half gallon bag, a, a you know, every like maybe five days. I was noticing. Which, I was noticing today, like like when you when we first planted that garden. It just seems so big and empty, and today, I mean, it, it it's like overflowing. Oh, I know. Like everything's huge, uh-huh. and just, I mean, it's that whole space is. It's filled up now, and it's yeah. like there's, all, and I was thinking that too. It's like I don't have enough space. I thought when we made the rows, we had plenty of space, but yeah. now it's all filled in. And I have to kind of. There's a fence uh, around it, so yeah. it's kind of contained. It's mm-hmm. kind of overflowing. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Yep, yep. It's beautiful. I love it. But every um, farm needs a garden. Yeah, of course it does. And and so I was but I was out there picking some green beans this week and I saw I was like, what is wrong with this one? It's just kinda that I there were no beans on it and it was like withering and dying. I'm like it's mm. planted with all the rest. It's right here with everything else and, and the green beans are not growing on it and and then I just kind of started looking, because these are kind of like bush beans that I planted. They're more like little bushes. You don't have to, like, stake them on vines for them oh. to get tall, so you have to get down. And I was looking around the base. This particular um, green bean bush had, had, I don't know if when I was watering, I accidentally hit it with the, the hose when I was moving it, and it got cropped from from the it base broke, it broke off it broke off and so because it was kind of a bush you didn't really I didn't really see that I knew it was oh. kind of laying over but I was like wow okay so that's what happened to it that's why it's not producing anything Makes and sense. yeah and you know that that really got me thinking about we've been we've spent the last few episodes talking about the five love languages and how you can learn a language to speak to to be able to love your spouse better and um you know, we spent a lot of time talking through those, and it dawned on me that it's great if you can, if that fruit in your life, you know, it takes a lot of work to be able to, if you don't speak that language, you've got to spend the time to learn a language that you don't know and be able to to love your spouse well. But um, it might take a long time before you start you know, seeing fruit from that, mm-hmm. and and a lot of times you're like, man, this is just hard. And it's not worth it. It's, it's not, not worth it. It's, it's not, not working. working. Yeah. And, and if you're not seeing fruit, but sometimes we produce fruit that's just we're straining to produce it. It's like mm. it's, it's too hard for us to keep that up consistently. And so by the time we're starting to get a crop, we're just tired and worn out. It's like by the time I have loved you well and I'm starting to see that you're feeling loved by that, it's like, man. I don't know if I can sustain that. Mm -hmm. And especially if talking in the context of the love languages, if it's not your, yes, your love languages doesn't come natural to you. It doesn't come natural to me. And, um, I am not strong enough in my own strength to sustain loving someone outside of myself in a different way than I'm used to loving. Mm -hmm. I can't produce that for a lifetime. Mm Mm-mm. Um, I can't sustain that, and um, it takes something bigger and greater within me, a a source of strength and power that outside of myself I don't have, and just kind of like that, that green, those green beans are not going to be produced when it's cut off from the vine. Um, I feel like that if we're not drawing our strength from something that is 
far greater and more eternal than we are, mm. then I'm going to get tired of trying to meet you there. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have no energy to love you like that. And I'm going to be frustrated. You're going to be frustrated. And so is it even possible to sustain loving your spouse the way God's called you to over a lifetime? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So here at the Marriage Adventure, our passion is to see marriages thrive. And sometimes you and your spouse may not just be not thriving, but you may be at a place to where you feel like divorce is the only option. Maybe it's the only next step that you see, and there's really no hope. Well, that's why we have our reset and our rescue marriage intensives here at The Marriage Adventure. If you've gone through something like infidelity or years of disconnection, maybe a rescue intensive is for you. Or maybe, maybe you're not there. Maybe you've just walked through a lot of life. Maybe you've had long-term illness or maybe you've had uh, a job change or empty nest or or just things that you need to debrief before you can move on and feel like your marriage is thriving then maybe a reset is for you our intensives are three days they're all inclusive so that includes lodging that includes meals food and then we just pray that you would come and feel feel peace feel restoration and feel pampered as you learn what it's like to feel the empowering work of the Holy Spirit heal your marriage. If this, if you think this is for you or for someone that you know, then go to the marriageadventure.com and scroll down when you see our reset and our rescue intensives. So today we are taking a lesson from the garden and um, from my garden and and talking about how you can sustain love over a lifetime. And Mm -hmm. I think because I have in the last two years gotten into just um, the garden and making things grow and planting and seeing that it makes me think a lot about the original garden, the Garden of Eden and Mm -hmm. And God's intent for for what He created. Mm-hmm. Um, just yeah, I'm, I, I really don't spend a lot of time out there. I help you, you know, till it up and put the fence up, and I'll help water it. But you're the one that gets in there and and keeps the weeds out and keeps the bugs out mm-hmm. and pulls and plants the seeds, and uh, and you'll come in all the time with just this really, really, uh, really cool illustration mm-hmm. about how gardening just corresponds so much with scripture yeah. and the work of the Holy Spirit. It's really cool that he put us in a place. God created us to be able to live on this earth and to work it and to tend it and that the earth produces the food and the things that we need and that he originally created the entire earth as this amazing garden. And when he created us, he created us in fellowship with him mm. and you think about how peaceful and, I mean, when I'm in the garden, honestly, I can lose myself there for hours because it's quiet that I can, I can just kind of dive in and I can just, um, I don't know. I just feel this connection with the Lord because it's cool to see things grow. And in the garden of Eden, man was living as God intended for at the beginning and God was connected to them through their spirit. They had an alive spirit and they walked and talked with them and perfect fellowship with perfect fellowship with the father. And they had the power and the strength to love each other because they had the power and strength of God in them. And that was his intention for earthly relationships. We were never really created for relationship with each other apart from a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And now we're still blessed that we, you know, that everybody, there's this common grace that we can have relationships, whether we're in relationship with God or not, Mm -hmm. that everybody gets to experience love in some way, which I think is just this, it resonates in our spirit. Um, It, it it testifies to the fact that there's a loving God that would give us that as common grace. But, you know, we, we mess that up. And then God said, you know what? I'm not done with this illustration. I'm going to allow, I'm going to send Jesus and I'm going to cover that sin and I'm going to put my life in you and produce fruit through you mm. to love the people again around you the way I intended it. 
Mm-hmm. And so um, seeing that that green bean bush broken off down at the down from the vine, it seeing it disconnected just reminded me how apart from him, and he's given this illustration in in John fifteen that apart from him that we're not going to produce fruit. That's right. We can do nothing. Yep. So now you can you can look like a green bean. Yeah. Stalk. You can sustain. I mean, when that thing was cut, it probably stayed green for a few more days. Absolutely. It probably took in some water that you're watering it. Mm-hmm. You know, just enough. And in that, in that, a great illustration of us that we can, you know, Jesus used that illustration to say, uh, apart from me, in me you can do anything. Abiding in me, you can mm-hmm. do anything. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And and then he went on. He said, he said, it's. I'm not sure if it was in this passage or the other one where. If you're not, you're like that branch that's cut off Mm -hmm. and you just die and you wither away. Mm -hmm. But in my flesh, if we just want to kind of on the heels of the love language, Mm -hmm. uh, talking about the love languages, in my flesh, I can can love you through quality time and I can love you through acts of service for a season. Mm -hmm. But like you said before the, the break, I can only juggle so many of those things for so long. Until it becomes burdensome. Mm-hmm. And isn't that a great, that, that's so what the Christian life is like. That if we are not planted in him, I can only do it for a season. Right. That, that green bean stalk can stay green for a little bit of time. But eventually, it's just going to wither. And then it won't produce anything. Uh-uh. Um, which, and that's John fifteen five. I am the vine, you are the branches. You remain in, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit, and apart from me, you can do nothing. So how do you stay connected to the vine so that we can produce his love? His love will be produced through us to love our spouse in the way that they need to be loved. How do we do that? Well, I think, I mean, this is great to put this in the context of marriage, but it, it, it applies in everything in life. Mm-hmm. Um, he never intended God never intended us to live a life apart from his spirit within us. Right. When he created us in his image in the garden, he created us to be indwelt by his spirit. Mm-hmm. A, a physical representation of the almighty God here on earth. Mm. So much so that someone said that if an alien were to come to earth and they see us, they say they could know what our God looks and, and acts like. Wow. That we are physical. We're not God. No. But by his life in us, we're representations of him. We're an image bearer or an image a reflector. Bearer. We reflect mm-hmm. his image. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and so, I mean, if we're doing that, then obviously this is going to change our marriage. This is going to change our relationship. It's going to change every relationship. But specifically, the person that's going to be the greatest beneficiary of Christ's life produced in me is you. Yes. And so I think for so long in my Christian life, though, um, especially my teenage years, early college years, before God revealed this kind of thing to us, it was get Christ in my heart. He, He saves me from my sins. Now I have to be as good as I can and work as hard as I can to be a good Christian. And, uh, and I knew he, I, I wasn't trying to earn his love I knew he loved me, but I was probably trying to earn his favor, mm-hmm. you know, so he wouldn't be disappointed in me so that, you know, um, maybe I get some gold bricks in my mansion one day. I don't know. <laughs> but it, when this was revealed to us, it revolutionized everything. Right. And it revolutionized our marriage. It definitely well. did. So what does that connection to the vine look like? And I think the first thing, if you're thinking that's great, that's, but that's all like... You're talking words that I don't understand. I'm not a gardener. I'm not, I don't get this. So what does this look like? The first thing is I think we've got to, first of all, examine our lives and see, has there ever be- uh, come a point in our lives when we've realized I-, I don't, I'm not connected to God. I don't have that mm. in me. I don't, there's nothing good in me and I need him. And, and that's that point of salvation. And that's saying, God, I just, I want you to take this old dead sinful life and give me, exchange it for yours and Mm -hmm. make my heart alive. And, 
And it's something that he offers to us, that free gift of salvation. And if if that's, you're listening, you're going, I don't, I don't know, I had never done that. I mean, yeah, this is just about marriage. But truly, I'll say this, you can have a marriage um, if you're not, you know, if you're not a believer, your marriage can be some, there are some decent marriages, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to say, this is how God intended it from the very Mm -hmm. beginning that you stay in connection to him, that you have an alive spirit that connects with him and on an ongoing basis. And that makes your relationship with your spouse far greater. So you mentioned common grace earlier. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a, if I'm not a believer and you're not a believer, then first of all, it's God's common grace, meaning he has grace for salvation, Mm -hmm. grace, forgiveness of sins, um, and, and indwelling life of Christ in you. But he also has grace over the entire world. The fact that he has not wiped out this world. No no kidding. (laughs) You know, there's grace in the fact that sin happened and he didn't just, you know, um, if you you want to hear that again, (laughs) that is God wiping everything out. That sound, that's what it would sound like. If that happened. So that's grace in itself. But the common grace that he allows even the most um, defiled, horrible person, murderer, rapist, all of that, to wake up in the morning and breathe his air. Mm -hmm. That's common grace. He allows. Well, and allows that same person to love, to love love people, experience love of another person at all. And maybe, maybe. They're not that type of person. Maybe they're just, they just don't know Jesus, but they're good people. Mm-hmm. Right? I know a lot of lost people or people that aren't Christians that, man, I, they're probably better than me mm-hmm. in their actions, right? Better than, well, not better than you, Bonnie, <laughs> but better than me. And so, um, so that's common grace. Sure. And he allows those people to feel love. Now, if we're not saved, if we're not Christians, the best love you're going to get from me Mm-hmm. is me trying my best in action and devotion to show you love. Yeah. And that's going to be circumstantial. Because if it's a great day, man, I'm going to show you love well. I'm going to love you well. Mm-hmm. But if it's been a really rotten, horrible day and my circumstances aren't good, I'm probably not going to be showing you a lot of good love. Mm-hmm. It's all circumstantial. And, and right. I can try in those bad times, but what does godly Christian love look like? Well, now I'm not loving you out of Daniel's strength. Mm-hmm. When I'm abiding, when I'm, and we'll talk about that in a second, when I'm walking with him, when his life is being reproduced in me, right? just like the nutrients come up through the ground into mm-hmm. the vine of that, that bean plant or whatever it is, that bush, it's life giving, mm-hmm. right? Now I have a life source pumping the the spirit of God, the life of God through me. Now the love, love I'm going to show you isn't just Daniel's manufactured love as best as I can. Now it's what it's the it's love his. of the it's it's, it's the creator. God's, yeah, it's the author of love. The who it, he is love. It's his essence. It's who he is. Now that's what you're getting. Mm-hmm. That's way better than I can concoct or manufacture. Yep. So the first thing to be in connect to being connected to the vine is to know the vine, to know know, vine. know Jesus and allow him to transform your life. And this, yeah. it only takes place through him. So the second thing, once you've established that, you can't skip first base. But no. um, the next thing is that we stay connected by fellowshipping with him. By yeah. there's there's this big word called abide, which just means to live with. To, it's like you and I abide together. I abide in my house. We abide yes. in our house. We live together. We're around each other. Our family's together. We all, as a family, we have common language. We have common accents. Mm-hmm. We, we even make facial expressions that are the same. I'm, I saw somebody the other day that I had not seen her mom in years, but I'm like, oh my gosh, she is her mom because her facial expressions are like that. And cause she's mm-hmm. around her and she, they even, they even share the, the same humor she, jokes. Yeah, experience. Yeah. You don't even have to say anything no. because you spend so much time together. Yes. You just know. And that's yeah. what happens in marriage that you, you abide together, but in your relationship with Jesus, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. You, you spend time with Jesus. You read the Bible. So you get to know who he is more, not just because you're checking off a list, but it's like, it's a, it's an insight into the heart of God mm-hmm. and, it shows you who he is, and then you you can spend time praying. Um, and it's not even just knowledge; it's it's the 
he lives in us Mm -hmm. and he reproduces his life in and through us as we grow in that knowledge, in that relationship. It's more than just, I'm going to learn and I'm going to put into practice. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm going to learn. And as I learn, as I fellowship, he just, his spirit just begins to live through me. Mm -hmm. It's like I have this other peace in me. That's right. So we spend time with him. And we fellowship with his with people that that know him. We fellowship with the bride and um, listen maybe to godly put godly stuff in. And then I think the third thing would be we remove distractions that are going to disconnect us from that source of life. That's mm-hmm. you know we can get so distracted by our entertainment or noise of other other relationships, things mm-hmm. that are not pleasing to God. And sometimes it's things that are that God does. You know, it's not like they're bad, but it's just taken us away from him. Mm -hmm. And we allow those relationships, even good ones, to keep us from living connected on a daily basis where we're staying plugged in. And Mm -hmm. um, I love that you you said this not too long ago, that our lives bend in the direction of the voices that are loudest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't make, I didn't come up with that. I heard it, but it is, it is powerful. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Our lives bend in the direction of the voices that are loudest. Yep. And if those voices are people who don't know Jesus and they're just speaking things into us, or if our, it's our inter- entertainment or the music we listen to or the books we're reading or the social media platforms we're on, it's it can silence the, the voice of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we're filling our lives and our minds with the things of God, godly podcasts, godly um music and staying connected at church and small groups and reading his word and seeking his face, that voice is going to be louder than mm-hmm. any other. And then our lives are going to begin to bend in that direction mm-hmm. because that's the voice that we're hearing the most. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are just some of the ways that we can stay connected to the vine so that he continues to produce his life through us. And now when he does that, I'm going going to be able to have that power to over the long haul sustain. It's not my strength. Mm-hmm. It's his loving you through mm-hmm. through me. So back into the, since we're kind of coming off the heels of the five love languages, this is kind of almost a wrap up to it or a, a review of it. I can try my best to love you according to your love language mm-hmm. and it can still end in utter frustration. Yes. Yeah. If I'm doing it in my own power. Right. If I'm just trying to be a good husband and love you in that way. But what you're saying is if I abide and I walk and I do daily stay connected to the vine, like that green bean mm-hmm. bush, then he begins to live his life through me. And now it's him loving Bonnie through me yep. Yep. in the area of quality time. Yep. And now that that love language has power behind it. Yep. And that's how we can take a marriage that's okay and, Mm -hmm. or in good even, or even difficult. And we can turn that into the incredible marriage adventure Mm. that God's intended us to have because he never intended for us to love each other apart from his power. That's right. So that's good. I think we end there. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We hope you guys have a great, great week. Hey, if you like this podcast, check us out on YouTube and you can like and subscribe there. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Marriage Adventure.